Hey Internet, what's happening? This is Sean Kenny with Sean Kenny Films, and I want to thank you for stopping by my channel. It's been a while since I've uploaded any videos because I am a full-time wedding filmmaker here in California. So doing these kind of videos is a little bit something that I like to do on the side. Uh, I do run a lot of tests myself. I do enjoy shooting color charts and different test subjects to constantly tweak my camera settings and just kind of always see, you know, what the best optimal settings are for each camera that I use. And so last year I uploaded a video comparing the Sony a7 III versus the Sony a7S and I was comparing the HD quality, uh, mainly the internal versus recording it externally and then also comparing the 4K quality internally versus downscaled. So if you haven't checked out that video, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can see what I'm referencing. In the comment section of that video, someone left a reply saying, in this case, the a7 III can get away with recording 4K and downscale it to 1080p for great quality. However, when in motion, the 4K codec poorly capped at 100 megabits per second is punishing compared to the 50 megabits per second codec of 1080p. So I thought that that was interesting because they do make a good point. When you are filming in HD, you're shooting at 50 megabits per second, but when you're shooting in 4K, you're shooting at 100 megabits per second. So the 4K image is four times larger than your HD, but the bit rate is only doubled. So it stands to reason that the internal 4K uh, might suffer from poor codec quality. So I wanted to run a few tests just to see if that's true, and if it is, just to see how bad the quality is. So first up, I set the Sony a7 III to record in HD internally, and I'm also recording externally to my Blackmagic Video Assist, also in HD, ProRes LT. So as I'm moving the camera around, I'm looking to see if I can notice any quality decreasing in the codec, like if it breaks apart at all. Here's that same shot, but at 200%. Again, looking to see if I see any uh, breaking apart in the codec, see if it's, I'm looking for macro blocking, anything, and here, I switched the a7 III to record at 4K internally, and it's also recording externally to the Blackmagic Video Assist, but again, it's downscaling that 4K to 2K and recording in ProRes LT. Here's that same shot again, just blown up by 200%. Now, obviously, the biggest difference that I see immediately is, of course, the rolling shutter. It's worse when you're shooting in 4K versus HD, but we already knew that. Now, the next thing that I wanted to do was increase the luminance of both shots to see if I could expose any hidden weaknesses in the codec quality. I should also mention right now that the internal 4K versus the external downscaled, I still think that the noise pattern does look better on the internal 4K. The noise, especially in the blacks, looks much smaller and much better contained than even the external recording that's downscaled from that 4K. So I looked over that video multiple times and I went frame by frame to see if I could tell a difference between the internal 4K and the external 4K that's downscaled to HD. And I think this frame probably is the, the best example. You can see that on the internal 4K, especially around that axe or on the right side, you can see where the codec is breaking apart. I can see a lot of macro blocking, especially around the edges that I'm not seeing on the external. This would seem to prove that when your 4K is capped at 100 megabits per second, you are going to have some quality loss and you're going to suffer from a little bit of macro blocking, especially when you're when you have a lot of heavy movement. 
So let's see what the internal HD looks like compared to the external HD to see if there's any difference. And again, I increased the luminance on both these clips just to see if I could expose any hidden weaknesses. And once again, I went frame by frame through the entire video to see if I could find the same type of macro blocking that I saw in the internal 4K. And you know what? I did not find anything uh, to the same degree. Here's a still frame from recording internally HD as well as recording externally to the Blackmagic Video Assist. And again, I don't see the macro blocking. So again, this would seem to prove that yes, indeed, recording in 4K internally, you are gonna suffer from some of that macro blocking. So what can we conclude from these tests? Well, the first thing that I concluded is that when I'm shooting in 4K internally, but I'm externally recording to my Blackmagic Video Assist that's downscaling that, the noise is still way better than when I'm recording in regular HD. Plus, I'm also getting a lot more detail with that downscaled 4K rather than just shooting straight up HD inside. The second conclusion is that yes, you are gonna see a drop in quality if you are using the internal 4K files. But when you're recording externally at the higher bit rate, such as ProRes LT, you aren't gonna see that macro blocking anymore. So once again, it's worth it to still downscale your work if you're recording externally at a higher bit rate. The one benefit I would say is that when you are using those internal 4K files, the noise in the shadows seems to be best from those files, even when you're comparing it to the external files that's being downscaled from that 4K. It seems like there's something that's going on in that external recorder that is just not handling the noise pattern as well as the internal 4K. So I hope that this video was helpful to some of you out there. Obviously, a lot of this depends on whether or not you're able to increase the bit rate on your camera. If you're shooting with a Sony camera, you can't increase the bit rates internally. You're gonna have to buy an external recorder, which I would highly recommend anyways. I love my external recorders. I love being able to record in ProRes. I think there's just a huge benefit to that and it saves me time in the edit process. And as we can see, you are getting a much better quality when you're able to record at a higher bit rate uh, in that ProRes LT or even ProRes HQ if you've got the hard drive space for it. So I'm sorry it took me so long to get this video done. Right now we are in the middle of the pandemic. So hopefully I can have a little bit more time to make some more videos if you guys have any other questions or any anything about wedding filmmaking or gear comparison. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for stopping by.